I'm gonna show you how to use the Ballet Crypto Wallet. I'm gonna unbox it for you and show you everything you get when you buy one. I'll be setting it up on the app, going through all the pros and cons of using this crypto wallet, and I'll be showing you how I would use this wallet in my life. And when we hit a thousand subscribers on this channel, which should be by the end of this year, I'll be giving away one of these Ballet Crypto Wallets to one of you guys. So make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. I'm Devin Cook, I can hardly believe it's already December, and welcome back to Dev Money. All right, so you just got into crypto, you bought some Bitcoin, you bought some Ethereum, maybe even some Cardano or Solana, probably you already have some Dogecoin, and maybe even you bought an NFT or two. But the more you've been getting into the crypto space online, the more you've been seeing all of these people getting scammed out of their cryptos and out of their NFTs. And the more you're seeing all of these horror stories, the more you're concerned that you're gonna get your crypto or NFT stolen from you. And trust me, I've been in your shoes, I know how scary it can be, the thought of spending all of this money on crypto and NFTs just to have it stolen right Right out of your wallet. And what you've probably found out, and the reason I'm sure you're watching this video right now, is that you found out the best way to store your crypto and NFTs is with a physical or a hardware wallet. And there are a lot of options. You have the two typical juggernauts in the space, Trezor and Ledger. And then you also have Lattice, which is a very nice option, but can be a bit pricey as well. And as someone who is maybe a little bit paranoid about having their crypto assets stolen, I've done countless hours online researching all of these different wallets and making sure I know know which one is right for me and the different pros and cons of each of them. That's why I've been making all of these hardware wallet videos because I figure someone else ought to benefit from all the research I've done as well, not just me. Now, one of the intimidating aspects of getting a ledger or a Trezor, especially for those brand new to the crypto space, is you have to securely store and manage a 24 word seed phrase. And if anyone ever gets access to the seed phrase, you accidentally put it on your notes app or you take a photo of it and put it on the cloud. Someone can get access to that and then steal all of your crypto. And too many people compromise these seed phrases, which really defeats the purpose of having a hardware wallet. And so that's where this ballet crypto wallet comes in. It's a wallet that I've recently found out about and have been doing a lot of research on. And this is by no means a perfect crypto wallet. None of them are. They all have their drawbacks, but they also have their advantages as well. But one of the benefits of these ballet wallets is you don't have to deal with those 24 word seed phrases. You don't have to worry about securing it and you don't have to worry about protecting it from others. The only thing you do with this wallet to send and receive crypto is use a QR code. No, literally, that's all you do. You just use a QR code. So it's extremely simple. And in my perspective, it's probably the most simple to use physical crypto wallet that you can get on the market. But even though it's simple, you still get the benefits of a cold storage wallet. So let's dive right into it. So this is their website, balletcrypto.com. And you're gonna see an example here of this wallet, which I'll be unboxing here shortly. And you can see that really, it's just like a credit card. It has a QR code right here and it has a Bitcoin logo. So you're not gonna have to deal with any cables. You're not gonna have to deal with any software updates because it's just, basically a metal card. And they support 100 plus cryptos on here, all of the typical ones, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance Coin, Tether, Cardano, Polkadot, Dogecoin, Shiba Inu, Litecoin. They do not support Solana. And if you do want to support Solana within a physical wallet, you're going to need to use Ledger because the Trezor doesn't support Solana either. And before you ask, yes, the Ballet Wallet also does support NFTs. And here's the list of supported NFTs. Now you're going to notice that this is a pretty small list of supported NFTs because this is the list of NFTs that are supported with in the mobile app. Meaning that if you have one of these NFTs on this list and then you go import them into your Ballet Crypto Wallet, you're gonna see these NFTs displayed within your Ballet app on your phone. Now, if you have another Ethereum NFT that is not shown on this list, you can still store it within your Ballet Crypto Wallet. It's just not gonna show up in that app, but it still will be within that account and you'll be able to see it on OpenSea or on Etherscan. And the Ballet Wallet does interface with OpenSea through this Wallet Connect option that you're gonna see when logging into OpenSea. So if you wanna put in NFTs within the Ballet Wallet, you can do so and you can sell them right through the Ballet Wallet using Wallet Connect. And you're gonna see on the Ballet Wallet that there are three different options. The first option right here is the Real Series. This is the one I'm gonna be showing you right now. This is the one I'm gonna be unboxing and this is the one that just starts at $35. Now you're gonna notice on the website that there are different logos for these different wallets. Now it doesn't mean that just because it has the Bitcoin logo on the wallet or the Litecoin logo or the Ethereum logo that it only stores that crypto. Each of these wallets can store all of those cryptos that I just showed you, there's only gonna be two differences. One is just the logo. As you can see here, if you pick the Bitcoin logo, you're gonna have the Bitcoin logo on your wallet. Makes sense, duh. If you pick Dogecoin, you're gonna have Dogecoin on there. If you pick Ethereum, you're gonna have Ethereum on there. But as you'll notice as well, when you see this wallet address on the wallet, this is a zero X wallet address, which means it's an Ethereum wallet address. When you go on to Dogecoin, you're gonna see a DT wallet address. And when you go on to Bitcoin, you're gonna see a BC wallet address. So this means that if you're primarily dealing with Ethereum, you're probably gonna wanna pick 
the Ethereum wallet because that's gonna be the main wallet. And this QR code that's on this physical wallet, this card is gonna be associated with that Ethereum wallet address. Same thing with Bitcoin, meaning if you primarily deal with Bitcoin, sending it and receiving it, probably go with the Bitcoin logo because the QR code is gonna be assigned to that Bitcoin address. So that's how all that works. And when we set up the wallet, I'm gonna be showing you how to put other crypto accounts on this wallet. So the real model is the most basic, it's $35. Then you also have the Pure Series, which are actually like really nice wallets. They're like made out of real silver and real gold. So if you're into that, you wanna flex on the crypto nation, go with one of these. You can see you can buy them in this really nice case down here as well. And then lastly, we have this Pro Series. Now this Pro Series is actually my preferred version of the Ballet wallet. They sell them in packs of three and you're actually gonna be the one generating your own passphrase for this wallet instead of having Ballet generate it for you. So it adds an extra layer of security and you're also gonna have to use this passphrase whenever you're sending crypto. So the Pro Wallet is definitely for those that are already into crypto and wanna store more assets than just maybe a couple hundred dollars on the Ballet wallet, but it is more expensive at $179 and it does have a bit more of a technical setup process. But honestly, I still think this is the best option regardless of the price because I'm a bit of a sticker for security. So if you're not that way, you may not need this one. And the main way that these wallets are able to get around not having that 24 word long seed phrase is by using a BIP38 standard instead of the BIP39 standard. Now you may never have heard about those alphabet soup phrases before, BIP38 and BIP39. But if you've ever used a hardware wallet before like a Ledger or like a Trezor, or even you've set up a Trust Wallet or a MetaMask, you're already familiar with those 24 word seed phrases and those are created using the BIP39 standard. The Ballet Wallet, however, is created using the BIP38 standard. And I'll try to put these into very simple terms and I'll leave a link down below that explains the differences in more depth if you want to get into the real techie differences. So the BIP38 standard is used to encrypt a single private key for Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies that is impervious to brute force attacks and protects the user. The BIP39 standard is a way of encoding entropy, which just means random bit data, into a word list that is usually used to encode a seed. That's where you get those mnemonic seed phrases from. And honestly, they're both really good encryption standards. BIP39 is a little bit newer than BIP38, but they both get the job done and provide great levels of security. And some people have had issues with the BIP38 standard and don't think Ballet should use it because they don't think it's secure enough. So the CEO of Ballet named Bobby Lee put somewhat of a challenge out on Twitter. And basically he said, if you could hack the Ballet wallet, he would give you $100,000. And this is it up here right now. You can see this was just posted October 6, 2021. The total bounty now is over $100,000. And if you go onto this website, takebobbysbitcoin.com, you can read about the challenge. And right now the total bounty value is two Bitcoin and the clock has been running for one year and 124 days. And you have this wallet right here and you can see the public address and you can see the private key, but you're not gonna see the BIP38 passphrase. And then on this wallet right here, you're gonna see the public address and the BIP38 passphrase, but not the private key. And so this was really done to show that you need to have all three ingredients in order to get access to these wallets and steal any crypto or any assets from them. And the fact that this has been running for about a year and a half, I think does a really good job to show that this is a pretty secure wallet. Now let's get into this unboxing. So this is the box that you're gonna be getting. You're gonna see on the box all of the cryptocurrencies that it supports, a QR code to download the Ballet app. And on the front, you can see the card right in here. So we're just gonna pull this open right here to open it up and we're gonna see everything right here. Thank you for choosing Ballet. And now, boom, your wallet is ready to use. Do not peel off the sticker on your wallet until you want to send out cryptocurrency. I was trying to pull it out, that wasn't quite working. All you have to do is pull it out and it slides out perfectly. And you can see right here, or rather you can probably hear that this is straight up metal. And then you can see inside of this as well that you're gonna get an acrylic case that you can use to store your wallet. And then you can see what everything is on your wallet, your serial number, your primary account, your honeycomb pattern, your serial number right here, your encrypted private key, your encrypted private key, QR code, the wallet passphrase scratch off, the wallet passphrase, and you can see all of these different things right here. Now, when you get this wallet and you unbox it, there's a couple things you wanna check to make sure that the security of it hasn't been tampered with. Number one, you wanna make sure that this QR code right here hasn't been tampered with and it hasn't been peeled off. And also as another security feature, you're you're gonna be able to see a honeycomb pattern if ever the QR code was lifted up to reveal the private keys. You also wanna make sure that this passphrase down here doesn't have any scratches and that it's completely intact. You can see right here the serial number and you can see right here the public address. And then also if you do have a UV light handy, you can shine this on here and make sure that Bitcoin lights up right here and ballet over on the top left corner of the QR code. And then on the back, it just has some information and it has a little place where you can write a memo. So that's everything you're gonna get within the box. Now we just need to set up the wallet on our phone. 
home. So to do that, I'm gonna scan the QR code on the back of the box and that's gonna take me to the ballet website. I'm gonna go over to the app store and then I'm gonna download this app. And then once I open the app, I'm gonna have this little button that allows me to scan the QR code on the wallet. So all I'm gonna do is just gonna scan that. It picks it up really quickly. And then you can see that it's already added this wallet to my account here on my phone. And then I can tap this button right here to add more tokens. So I already have Bitcoin on there. Let's activate Ethereum. Let's activate Binance coin, you know, Dogecoin. We love Shiba Inu, gotta activate that. Maybe some Litecoin if you're into that, Polygon. And then you can go through and add any other coins that you're interested in. Once you're done with that, you just go back and now you can see all of the balances of all of the apps that you have within this wallet. And if you go back to the main screen, you're gonna have a couple options. You're gonna have this option up here that just allows you to purchase a ballet wallet. We don't need to do that since we already have one obviously you're gonna see the new user guide and you're also gonna see this real Bitcoin wallet that we just set up if you do want to have multiple wallets this app will support multiple wallets as well if you want to use them for specific cryptos or one for crypto one NFTs or however you want to do that then you also have this more section right here and you're gonna see all of the information all of the settings and a bunch of different stuff you can see your sin history all that kind of stuff you can see right there. And also directly through the app, you can hit buy and you can actually buy Bitcoin right through this app. You don't have to go into Coinbase. You can just buy Bitcoin right through this app and have it get directly imported into this wallet. And also if you have a cryptocurrency that you wanna exchange for another cryptocurrency, you can just tap exchange. I don't have any that I'm available to exchange right now, so it's not saying that I can't exchange anything, but if you do have say Bitcoin, for example, you can exchange that for Ethereum or Dogecoin or anything else like that. And to send money into your Ballet Crypto Wallet, it's extremely easy. All you're gonna do is you're gonna open up your Ballet app on your phone, click on your Ballet wallet, and then go down to whatever crypto asset that you're trying to receive into the wallet. In this case, let's receive some Dogecoin because everybody loves some good Dogecoin. So if you haven't already, Ready, you need to add Doge into your wallet. And then once you do, scroll down, click on Doge, you're gonna open it up and you're gonna see that you can copy your Doge wallet address. Then what you need to do is go into whatever crypto exchange or wallet that you have Dogecoin on. So I'm just gonna go into Coinbase, go over to my Dogecoin, and then I'm gonna hit send Dogecoin. You're gonna type in the amount of crypto that you want to send, hit next. And now this is where you're gonna enter in the Dogecoin address that you copied from your ballet wallet. You're gonna hit send and then it's gonna say that you've successfully sent your Dogecoin into that new wallet. So so then you're gonna go back into your ballet wallet and you're gonna refresh the app and make sure that your Dogecoin is in there. So that's how simple it is to send crypto into your ballet wallet. The process is the same with NFTs, you're just gonna be using your Ethereum wallet address. And if you notice, we didn't have to scratch off the QR code, we didn't have to scratch off the passphrase off of the physical wallet, but now that we're gonna send money out of our ballet wallet, we're gonna to have to scratch those off. So let's send our Dogecoin out of our ballet wallet. In order to do that, you just go into Dogecoin on your ballet wallet and make sure you have copied already the address that you wanna send your Dogecoin to. All you're gonna do is you're gonna hit send and then you're gonna paste the address that you want to send your dogecoin to and then once you've done that you're gonna get this window pop up and it's gonna ask you for a passphrase now this is the passphrase that's at the bottom of your ballet crypto wallet and so you're gonna to need to get something like a knife or a coin and you're gonna to need to scratch off that passphrase so that you can enter it here and then once you've done that it's gonna take you to the next window which is gonna ask you to peel off the QR code on the ballet wallet so that way you can scan or manually input the private key and then once you've done that you just hit confirm and it's gonna send the dogecoin to whatever wallet wallet address you want to send it to. So you can see that it's pretty simple to send money into your ballet wallet, but also to send money out of your ballet wallet. So that should answer most of your questions about the ballet wallet setup. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions, but what are the pros and cons of using this wallet? Well, the biggest pro in my opinion for this ballet crypto wallet is that it is the most simple to use by far. Far, it honestly took like three seconds. You scan the QR code and then you're good to go. And another pro for this wallet is that the private key is actually created within two separate geographical locations. And the private key isn't ever revealed until the user signs and sends a transaction, meaning sends crypto or sends an NFT out of the wallet. So that's the second pro. And the third pro is that you don't have to write down and store a seed phrase, which is really good for anybody just getting into the crypto space. The fourth pro, in my opinion, is that it's only $35, which is a really approachable starting price for a hardware wallet or a physical wallet in this case. And the fifth pro is that this never needs any updates since it's completely physical, although the app on iOS and Android will be getting updates, of course. And this is far more secure than just using MetaMask. There are some negative aspects though to using this wallet and you need to be aware of these before going out and buying one. Number one is that the private key is gonna be exposed online when you go to send out cryptocurrency. Because there isn't any hardware to this, it's just a physical device. Whenever you're sending crypto, those private keys are gonna be exposed and they're not kept on the device like they are with a ledger or a Trezor. And secondly, even though the private keys are created in two separate locations, you do have to trust Ballet as a company to make sure they have all the right protocols in place and that they do destroy those two aspects to your private key. Because unlike Ledger or Trezor, where you can get the wallet, 
set it up and then immediately wipe it and get a totally new private key, you can't do that with this wallet. You're stuck with the one that you have, and so you have to put a lot of trust in Ballet. The third con that's gonna affect a lot of people is you're not gonna have any support for Solana right now, although this is the case on Trezor as well. If you do want a hardware wallet with Solana support, you do have to go with a Ledger device, either the Ledger Nano S or the Ledger Nano X. And the last con for this real Ballet wallet, the one that keeps me from using this with a lot of crypto assets, or at least large amounts of crypto assets, is that anyone that has access to this Ballet wallet can take all of your funds. They can take any NFTs and any cryptos. So if you have this in your wallet and you have a whole Bitcoin on here and you lose it at the park and someone picks it up and knows what this is, sure, they could find out who you are and give this to you, but they could also just as easily download the Ballet app, import this wallet into their app, and then send out that Bitcoin to another wallet. And then you would have lost that Bitcoin forever. So that's my biggest con with this wallet. And here's a little comparison that will help you think about how this Ballet wallet compares like another crypto wallet like the Ledger. This Ballet real wallet is like cash. If you lose the cash, it's gone. You're not going to get it back. No one's just going to replace your hundred dollars. And the same thing applies to this real wallet from Ballet. If you lose this wallet, anything on it is gone forever. You're not getting it back. But a crypto wallet like a ledger is more like a debit card or a credit card. If you were to lose your debit card, you're not going to lose all the funds within your bank account. You just call your bank, tell them you lost your debit card and you get a new one. And the same thing applies to a ledger. If you were to lose your ledger device, you just order a new one, re-input your seed phrase and you're good to go. You have access to all of your crypto on the new device. Now, how would I use this wallet on a daily basis? Basis. Well, mainly I would use this for small amounts of cryptos or NFTs that aren't worth thousands of dollars. I would think of it as actual cash. Think to yourself, how much money are you actually gonna store in your wallet on a daily basis? Are you someone that carries around two, $300, $500, $1,000 in your actual wallet in your pocket? However much you store in your actual wallet is how much I would store on this crypto wallet. So for me, I'm never gonna go around with more than probably $300 of cash in my wallet. So I probably wouldn't store more than $300 worth of crypto on this real ballet wallet. Now, obviously you don't have to carry this around in your pocket, even though it fits perfectly in a wallet. You can put it in a safe or another secure location and you can store a whole lot more crypto on it. So if I did want to store, say, an entire Bitcoin on this wallet, the method I would use would be to put that Bitcoin on here and then immediately go to my bank and put this in an insured security deposit box within that bank. For me, the thought of putting thousands and thousands of dollars on this and having it get stolen is just a risk that I don't want to take. So I would only do that if I was putting it in an extremely secure safe or a security deposit box in a bank. Now, the Pro Ballet wallet does add a lot of additional features that would make putting thousands and thousands of dollars on my Ballet wallet it a lot more feasible in my mind. So let me know down below if you want to see a review on the Pro Ballet wallet. And since we are getting into the holiday season, it's a great time to buy gifts for those that love crypto and NFTs. So check out my ultimate guide to buying holiday gifts for those that love crypto and NFTs.